happy to have her on. Shamnandu, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Iman John. How are you? خوب خوب نوروزتون پیروز خیلی خوشحالم نوروزتون پیروز از هم مرسی که منو دعوت کردی عید همگی مبارک مبارک so nice to see you i thought just looking at your first of all smile and looking at your background it's uh, okay for, i'm so sorry from my producer saying can you put her, put, you, put your volume down just a little bit please sorry oh my yeah, volume just, just a teeny weeny bit like 10 10% let me see if i even know how to do that i'm going to try and do that uh I think she sounds okay though, I'm not sure. It's too loud in your opinion? She's distorted. How do I sound now? Is that better? Is that better, Amish? Wait, hold on. Yeah, that's better. Okay. How's, We're good. how's that? Is that good? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Way yes. better. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh, no problem at all. All right. Yeah, so خوش اومدین to our virtual uh, living room over here. So happy to have you. Uh, I love your virtual living room. You have a half scene there. It's yes. looking beautiful. Yes, thank you. Kharam and Zahmat to uh, to make all this stuff. So uh, I have zero honar with regards to making half scenes. So I leave those things to the people who actually know what they're doing. So um, so how's everything? I mean, I, I know that you had like a challenging week. So I hope that as of sal tahvil. more health and more happiness and more laughter is in your life. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, we had a uh, my husband was a little bit uh, not feeling well and I'm hoping that he's on the mend and yes. I have two beautiful girls. Uh, Aliana is 9 and Mila is 5 and Wonderful. they have lots of schoolwork and keeping the company going. We're based in New York and we have an office in Vancouver as well, so we're US Canadian shop and we have lots of employees who are working from home at the moment because of coronavirus yeah. so we're trying to keep it all moving great i mean i mean you you definitely should have this little sign that says super mom in the background that's doing so many different things as if being a mom is not already a, a, an incredible role to have you've been running this this production game for a really really long time so uh why don't you kind of tell us you know the the, the first half and that is like the, the things that you've been working on so we can go ahead and play reels of it in the background as you're talking about it and yeah. um you know kind of, kind of let people know exactly what you've been doing and what kind of content that you provide for people to watch yeah sure i'll start with a little background um you had mentioned babak and friends of first no roos that was how i certainly got into the business it was this very holiday which um prompted me to want to teach the world about um iran and iranian culture Uh, Babak and Friends of First No Ruz was a cartoon we did um, a while ago. It was 30 minutes. We did it in Persian and in English. And we had Shohra Aldashlu, Parvi Sayyad, Ali Portash, uh, Catherine Bell in it. It was wonderful. And we learned from that that teaching children about difficult subject matters or fun subject matters like the Persian New Year is really well done through content and through music. So um, Ali and I started Big Bad Boo Studios. We first did Mix Nuts, which was a television series featuring Bobak, and we aired that on PBS and a whole bunch of other channels around the world. And then we started to really get into the game. We opened up our Vancouver studio for tax credit purposes and to get funding. Um, our TV series run anywhere from 13 episodes to 52 episodes, and budgets can vary from. 2 million to 6 million with about 140 people working on each production. Wow. Um, our first big hit was 1001 nights. Hezari ek shab dastane budish ke pedaram baram migoft bache budam. So we took Shahzad from those stories and made a serialized version of 1001 nights which is now airing on Amazon Prime Video and on certain PBS channels. Um, currently we are doing Uh, Lily and Lola, which is about a Persian family with two girls and their adventures. They have an Oruz episode, they have a Yalda episode, but also daily adventures in the lives of these two little girls. Uh, we have another series called 16 Hudson, which is Lily living in the building with other friends that are from different places. So Sam is uh, from Chinese background, Amala is from a, a half Irish, half Indian background, And Luke has two dads. Oh, wow. So I love it how you're basically, you know, breaking these barriers that are normally not discussed and integrating that into it. Um, what, what is, first of all, the catalyst of, of how you even got into this? Like what, what prompted you one day that, 
hey, you know what, I want to go ahead and make some of this content to help, you know, X, Y, and Z. So kind of, kind of just take us back to that as well. I just want to know where, yeah, where it so all started. Yeah, so it was a very, very memorable yeah. event. It was um, not in a good way. Uh, it was September 11th mm. that happened. And I was um, living as a single person in an apartment across the street from the World Trade Center in New York. And I was not there at the time, but the trauma that September 11th caused, I think sort of brought me back to younger days of being a child in Iran, having lived through the revolution and a few years of the Iran-Iraq war. I thought I had left war behind and um, September 11th really uh, realized that we're never safe, that we always have to protect our freedoms as people, as humans, and we have to always celebrate the good things. And um, I was taken aback by the negative rhetoric that Iranians were facing post 9-11. Uh, the idea that we're terrorists uh, really didn't sit well with me. And I was at the time in banking, I was working as a software engineer and heading up a professional services group at a, a large software company in New York working for Wall Street banks and um, knew nothing about animation and knew nothing about uh, content. So I started Persian Mirror, which was an online cultural magazine to teach the world about how beautiful Iranian culture is. I said, I don't know what to do, but let me at least write about what I know, the beautiful culture that my parents taught me about. Uh, half seen, no ruse, charshamba suri, uh, our beautiful wedding traditions with setting a beautiful sofre for the new life that you're going into as partners. So um, our beautiful food, our beautiful cinema, we have so much to offer the world. And it's, it's such a shame that the media has distorted and hijacked for one event, which we were not even involved in, lumped us in with all of the Middle East and said, you know, we're terrible people. I just couldn't take it. So uh, I started Persian Mirror and the site did really well. We uh, got people to contribute. You were part of it. Uh, people like yourself who do so much for us. And thank you, Iman, for all that you do. Look at this beautiful program, for example, reaching to so many people in such hard times. Uh, your work is, you know, incredible and important. So um, along those lines, we, um, you know, got the message out about Persian culture. And it was at that time that uh, I fell into the whole uh, animation because we were doing a Noru special and an aspiring writer director in LA had the idea for Balak and Friends, the first Noru by the name of Dustin Ellis. He um, showed me the script and all the work that he had done in full. So we partnered up and produced Balak and Friends. And um, that was really the beginning of it, seeing the power and the impact of Babak, Salman, and Susan jumping over the fire in Shashan Basuri. Mm -hmm. And then little Iranian American kids would see that on the screen and say, I want to jump over fire. Yeah. You know, because you see something on screen, that's your role model and you want to do it. Nothing more beautiful than passing on the culture and the beauty that we experienced as children to our children. Absolutely. So that's well, how it started. Yeah, no, I love it. And I remember like, I still remember when Andy's song came out, Dara Miran Tehran, and then just kind of seeing the integration of the music video, you know, it was just so cute. I mean, that was that was very like new for us as far as Persians and how we make our music videos and integrate cartoon. And that was such a wonderful collaboration. And I'm, you know, it's, it's that's why I love Andy, you know, like Andy is somebody that you can always count He's on. So that, sweet. that if it's something that is really for the betterment of a community or something good. He's always behind it, you know, like, and, and if, if he's not. Yeah, he jumped right music. in. Yeah. No, it was beautiful. Yeah, he jumped right in. He wrote a beautiful song that I'm in Tehran, which talked about the Kuchei Tehran, like you, it takes you back to your childhood. And he did a beautiful music video, as you say, which we integrated into the episode, but also all the actors that were so generous with their time. Parvi Sayyad, Shohra Aldashlu, Ali Portash, Catherine Bell. Uh, were amazing and generous and incredible to work with. They they both did voices in English and in Persian, and it was important to do an English version of it because we wanted to reach all kids, 
We yeah. wanted to tell all kids that the, that our holiday was important. We did over 400 screenings of the cartoon in places like the British Museum. So they were busing in hundreds of little British kids to learn about Persepolis oh, wow. and Nowruz. Um, you know, we have a beautiful history to be very proud of. And if we don't write about it, and if we don't make content about it that the world can enjoy, then the world won't know about it. So it's incumbent upon us to encourage each other, encourage the content writers, the artists, the creators, the singers, the songwriters to um, continue their amazing work. I mean, Iran already has such talented people, but now the uh, expat community also is so artistic. Uh, the kinds of things we're doing in Canada with Tear Gone and many other societies, the Iranian Women um, Foundation in Orange County, Yara Society, all these very strong Iranian women's foundations that have started over the years. Yeah. I'm so proud of our fellow um, expat community members and those who are working so hard to teach everyone about the kindness and generosity so core to Iranian culture. Absolutely. No, I mean, I couldn't agree with you more. There, there really are some, you know, incredible people that are doing some really awesome things and uh, what I what I personally love about what I'm doing with this Awesome People podcast is that I get to continue to have like these great conversations with these awesome people that are doing awesome things. And I was telling people earlier that really this entire live stream, the celebration of No Rules, is like a super extended version of my Awesome People podcast, but then with like shorter segments, you know. And so it's really it's so great that after knowing you for so long, we get to have this little virtual chat, uh, you know, with such a person that I consider an awesome person doing some great things for our community globally, you know, and, and I hope that you, you also take a moment and, and just kind of like take it all in and enjoy all this stuff that you're doing for us, you know, because, you know, we're, we're very proud of you. And I hope that you take a moment to just give yourself a lot of kudos and credit to all, all that you're doing. And hopefully it gives you more energy to continue doing all this great stuff, you know, so really appreciate everything. Thank you, you Iman John. I, I know that you know there's a mirror on the half scene and the mirror is there so that I can hold it up right now and say right back at you. Um, <laughs> I want to take a moment to thank you uh, for this incredible program. I was looking at the lineup of speakers you have, just incredibly talented, funny, adventurous, uh, important figures that you're bringing together. Uh, your whole team has been so wonderful. I want to thank every single person, including your sister, who's put together that beautiful, gorgeous half scene behind you. you. Um, it's such an important part of our celebration and thank you for all that you do, really. My pleasure, thank you so much. Um, so let, let's um, kind of touch on more on uh, 16 Hudson real quick. And then uh, I definitely want to make sure that you set up the, the clip for the Hazari Yikshap notice clip that we'll play because that's going to be a nice little five to seven minute segment that hopefully, I mean, I don't want to say just children to enjoy. I think this is something that no matter how old that you are, you can watch it and just be proud of the production. So uh, first tell me about 16 Hudson because there's some really big names involved in that production. And then we'll kind of segue into um, the, the clip at the end. Yeah, so uh, 16 Hudson is a preschool series that we're doing with the Canadian public broadcasters. Um, it was the first series to have an LGBTQ component. Um, but I also wanted to touch on The Bravest Night. That's the show that has sort of the star. Oh, sorry, Bravest Night. I'm sorry. That's the one. I'm sorry. I meant no, Bravest Night. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, it kind of is a good segue because in The Bravest Night, the story is that there is a um, little pumpkin farmer named Cedric, and he wants to grow up to be a knight. And in the backstory, he grows up to be a brave knight and he saves a prince from a red dragon. And at the end of the storybook, the prince and the knight get married. Uh, behind me, you see Cedric in the orange shirt and uh, Andrew is the prince. They get married. And in our series, which is playing on Hulu right now for the American, uh, American folks in the, in the audience, you can watch it on Hulu. Um, they adopt a young girl named Nia. Uh, she's also in the picture right above my Sabze here. And um, Nia is uh, a very and adventurous young girl, and she wants to be a brave knight like her father. So in every episode, we flash back to when Cedric was a little boy, and there's a purple grunt, a purple troll named Grunt who loses his bridge, and Cedric is trying to help him find his bridge. Um, so the show obviously has a lot of LGBTQ components in that we have 
different types of families and different types of uh, makeup of families. And um, we have, for example, Wanda Sykes in the show. Uh, RuPaul plays the big bad wolf. Uh, Wilson Cruz from Star Trek is the prince. Uh, T.R. Knight from Grey's Anatomy plays Cedric. Uh, Storm Reed, who was in A Wrinkle in Time, which was a Disney film with Oprah and Reese Witherspoon, plays Nia. And Bobby Moynihan, who's in Saturday Night Live and a huge comedian and actor, plays the role of Grunt. Uh, we have Christine Baronski from um, The Good Wife. She plays the evil red dragon. Uh, so some uh, star that's cast a star, involved. That's a star-studded uh, cast you got to put us in. It's incredible. Yeah, and actually Maz is in it as well. Uh, Maz Jabrani has worked with us from the beginning. Maz was um, in Mixed Nuts with us. He was in, he's the dad in Lily and Lo. Um, and he's, of course, in The Bravest Night with us. He's in 16 Hudson. Um, I love to be able to cast Iranians in my shows when I can to bolster their talent and to take advantage of their talent and to show them off to the world uh, alongside these other fabulous names. So um, we won the GLAAD Media Award for The Bravest Night, which is a very prestigious award in the United States. And uh, because of COVID, we couldn't go in person, but uh, it was a really fun show to make and we're hoping to do season one soon. I mean, season two. I mean, uh, season one already. For, first of all, what, what was the, um, the whole integration of, you know, having representation with, for the LGBTQ um, demographic, what, what is it that you, um, what, what made you kind of go that direction? And like, what, what kind of made you be like, you know what, now is the right time to do this? Yeah, so, uh, you know, there are many reasons I, I decided to do that. Um, we've always stood for a company that uh, wants to give voice to the voiceless. So from the beginning with, uh, you know, something like Bob Ack and Friends, Mixed Nuts, A Thousand and One Nights, I was really tapping into my Persian heritage and Iranian storytelling and wanting to put more Iranians on screen because I wanted Iranian Americans to see themselves on the screen. That was about representation. And at the time, those words didn't exist. They called us multicultural. Now there's such a talk with Black Lives Matter and uh, the women's movement and all of the things that happened in the last three to four years we have vocabulary around diversity, equity, and inclusion, representation, mattering. Um, you know, so from the time of a show like 16 Hudson, where the first Chinese Can Canadian or Chinese American main character was on TV. Do you know how many little Chinese kids are running around Chinese American or Chinese Canadian who have never seen themselves on television? So this was just an extension of what I did for Iranians. Every time I would go and present, people would say, it's great that you've done it for Iranians. Can you do it for my culture? I'm Vietnamese, I'm Greek, I'm Chinese. People want to see themselves on the screen. And so culturally, um, you know, uh, LGBTQ community, any sort of minority group that feels like they're not represented need to be on screen, their stories need to be told. And so with, um, the show 16 Hudson, where I created the character of Luke and he has two dads. One is Filipino and one is uh, white. Uh, one is a pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical sales agent and uh, Bayani is a executive pastry chef. This family was modeled after my own nephew. Uh, my own nephew, Kian, is four years old and he lives in Washington, DC and he has two dads. And so I wanted Kian to see himself on television. I wanted the family makeup of two dads to be normal and to normalize that. Uh, beyond that, uh, with Bravest Night, uh, the story was written by a award-winning children's author named Daniel Errico in New York. And he presented the book to me and then he wanted to serialize it and had the idea for the series. So um, he had been wanting to write about a two dad family. And because I'd already done 16 Hudson, he thought he would come to me. Uh, so all these people reach out to me that are like, you know, my culture or my group is not being represented. And so we've become that company that will say, well, we need to change that. And one of the issues we all have as consumers, as well as content creators, is that for a very long time, content creators and content writers were male and they were white and they were straight. So that the, the authentic stories were not being told. And now we're encouraging 
more people from diverse backgrounds to become writers, to become actors. So uh, this is a pain point in our industry, in the children's industry, that is very real. And this last year, I created workshops. Uh, they're called BIPOC workshops for free for newcomers they're and new they're talent called, creators. They're called what workshops? Uh, BIPOC. BIPOC stands for Black, Indigenous, and People of Color and Women. So we uh, provided workshops in creative writing, animation, and storyboarding. And we brought an incoming class of about six students in each workshop. And they were of these backgrounds. They were Black, they were Indigenous, they were someone who identifies as a person of color, uh, female uh, individuals. My group right now, or my storyboard department, is vastly male. So when you have that, you have issues. For example, when he's drawing a panel and he draws people in the background, 80% of the people are male. Well, guess what? 50% of the female is, of the population is female. Right. So we need representation as women. We need what? We need more female storyboard artists because a female storyboard artist will perspective and she might be more cognizant of being aware of having 50-50 background gender balance. So we have rules in the studio now where I say to my background designers, please make sure they're gender balanced. Uh, and we're very cognizant and aware of these diversity components to make sure that we represent people properly. Yeah, I mean, especially, you know, in, in the Persian community, you know, we're always unfortunately so behind in addressing these things that even are really late, even in the Western culture, you know? So for you to kind of do this, is really great because you're kind of like decreasing the gap between them. so you know by, by 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 putting these type of content out of the forefront so um i i i love everything that you're doing shabran joan and i i feel like i could talk for a long long time with everything that you're doing that's so impactful for uh, especially the next generation growing up um what i what i would like to do is two things um first of all we're having an issue with the uh, um uh, streaming the the five to seven minute clip but we'll get it and we'll play it later on but i was wondering if we could uh play the two minute clip of the 16 hudson um that we already have loaded up so we're gonna we're gonna play that um and then and when we come back i would love for you to have a noru's message to all the persians so if uh if the if the producers that can hear me right now if you can get that 16 hudson clip the two minute clip playing uh we'll play that and we'll come back and we'll have shot manjun uh give a notice message. And then for sure, I want to play the thousand one nights clip uh, once we get it downloaded um, or uploaded successfully. So um, Brandon, if we're able to play that clip right now, we can, we can go ahead and do that. There were kids in the family, a mom and dad, plus a granddad. But where is he? Technical glitches mm. are bound to happen Bop in a 24 hour life. Yeah, their granddad. Can I meet him? Please, Baba. Mm -hmm. huh. He didn't want to meet me. Maman, he looks so sad. It must be very hard for him. Harder even than for the rest of the family. Why? Think about it. He's older, so he had to leave a place he's lived his whole long life. Everything he knows. All his friends. And then he came to a place where he can't even talk to anybody because he only speaks Sarani. It's not easy. It must be scary and awful. We should have brought him a special gift. I wish I'd thought of that. Give him time, Lily. Everyone here is nice. It will be better once he gets to know us. Okay. He's had a minute. I'm going back in. <clears throat> Bapir? I'm Lily. Hmm. 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 <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Wait, I know chess. I mean, I'm terrible, but I know how to play. <laughs> hmm. 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 <laughs> Oh, mm. I love how this works. <laughs> Lily, it's time to go. Oh, really? Already? <laughs> Already? You've been at it nearly two hours. <laughs> Thank you. Spas. 
All right. We hope you enjoyed that uh, little clip. Another production by Big Bad Boo Studios. Um, so, Shop Anjun, um, I didn't want this conversation to end, but I do want it to end with you sharing any kind of message that you have for Persians all around the world as we enter 1400. So the virtual stage is all yours. Thank you so much, Imanjan. I wanted to thank you first and foremost for doing this program. It's been a pleasure to be here. Uh, I know we've had some really tough times over the last uh, 18 months, I want to say, because Corona has been with us for some time. But as it is tradition uh, with all Iranians around the world, we want to leave the bad energy behind and take the good energy into the new year. Uh, so I wish all of my Iranian, fellow Iranians all around the world, no matter where you are, in small towns and big cities, uh, night, day, whatever time it is with you, thank you for joining us. I wish you a prosperous and happy and wonderfully healthy New Year and New 1400. No and before I let you go, actually, where can they find more information? How can they uh, learn to support your programs and, you know, your Instagram website? Feel free to share that information. Thank you so much. So I have my own social media. I'm on Twitter, Insta, uh, Facebook. Happy to join my company is bigbadboo.com. If you want show information, if you want to watch any of our episodes, uh, a lot of them are on Amazon Prime video, which most people have a subscription for. So Lily and Lola, Mixed Nuts, A Thousand and One Nights, and Sixteen Hudson. Uh, Sixteen Hudson also airs in Canada on all the public channels in English and French. We also have our own SVOD subscription VOD platform called Oznos, O-Z-N-O-Z. -O and this is particularly important for the Iranian families who are teaching their children Persian like myself. Um, you can watch our programs, all of them that I mentioned, in Persian on Osnos. They're also offered in English and French. Osnos has programming in 10 languages. So we're a multilingual family, and I know a lot of you out there are as well. So uh, we would love your support on Osnos.com. And of course, contact me anytime with questions. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about those programs a little bit, Iman. Of course. Anytime. Uh, Shalajou, I know you want to get back to your family as well. Give them all a nice hug and kiss on my behalf. And hopefully it's a wonderful year for you and your family as well with no more trips to the hospital and nothing but uh, happy, healthiness inside your household. Uh, thank you so, so much for bringing so much joy and happiness into the households of millions and millions of Iranians, Iranian-Americans, Iranian outside of uh, Iran. Uh, we, we greatly appreciate you, very proud of you, we're rooting for you, and we can't wait to see everything else that you and your production studios and all the different extensions of it create for the world. You're, you're, you're a gift to our community and wish you all the best. Thank you. Bye. Happy Nowruz.